Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here. Thank you for checking out my videos. Go to thecombatsystem.com for all your mixed martial arts needs. And please subscribe to my YouTube page. Make sure to go to thecombatsystem.com and subscribe to my YouTube page. Cat Cats. Cats. me, and it was a good time. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Thank um, for helping me. Uh, make sure to subscribe to this guy's uh, channel, Dan the Wolfman. Uh, you respect the game, man. You know the game. You know what you're talking about. And uh, yeah, uh, he's pretty credible. Well, thank you, sir. Hey guys, look at this distracting hands video I got for you. This is all about distracting hands and about hands first biomechanics takedown defense. Um, I'm fresh off of being live cage side at UFC 236. Dustin Poirier's excellent performance against Max Holloway. You see some 52 hand blocks right there, skull and crossbones, also known as cross arms defense. Use that really well. I'll briefly talk about that. I could do a whole video on that. Um, when Max was coming in, he would walk back with that cross arm defense and he would block all three punches, or at least two out of the three, and partially the third. That would stop Max from getting going, from shifting, taking the shift stance, shifting to the southpaw stance, and he would keep blasting. Only did that once successfully, I think, in the fourth round. So, we've already seen Dustin Poirier use a very um, unique guard that really was a drastic game changer. Commentators didn't even call it, except DC won around and said he's using that high guard well. This is distracting hands. This is something I've been playing with since 2012. And this is something that I am recommending to Dustin Poirier to adopt to take on Khabib. Now, uh, people that basically haven't trained as long as I have think I'm crazy well I'm just kind of really dedicated to martial arts and have trained my whole life and maybe a little crazy and a little out there um, but that's not always a bad thing if you look at my recent video about my amazing anti-cage tactics I've been preaching that since 2012 that the only way against a much much better wrestler would be using my biomechanics my anti-cage tactics when there's a huge disparity a three month camp ain't gonna make that up that was true. It's the only way that Nagano got off the cage against Stipe was using the head twist. And it's the only way that Barboza got off the cage against Khabib was using my throw shove technique. Um, so please look at that video and give some credence to the fact that I've trained 33 years. The fact that I have four black belts. The fact I fought pro, including my three losses against three of the top ten most experienced fighters in the world, then or now... And so Dustin should keep his hands out. Why would you want to keep your hands out in this weaving up and down fashion that I do? One, it distracts the eyes. Fighters are not, when, when, when fighters and humans fear what they don't know. So if they don't know where, what, where the hands are and what they're doing, that's already a psychological advantage. You can parry down, you can parry up, wherever your hands are freely floating with uh, out in the space, closer to your opponent, without mus muscular contraction. Uh, so I'm talking about striking-wise, but we're going to get into how that really can help with takedown defense, guys, as we go on in the video. Already in the video, you see me uh, sparring a couple of pro deep fighters in Japan, and how it sets up my stuff. It also sets up your inside kick, especially your liver kick and your high kick. Your left high kick is a southpaw to an orthodox fighter very well. Here I was beta testing it at uh, Gokers Highest Non Academy versus uh, young muscular athletic guy. We're just boxing. Now I don't suggest it really just for boxing, but I wanted to test it out in purely just boxing. I know I could land kicks. Uh, so that's what you see me doing here. Uh, now, guys, I was playing with this at the same time the three months I was sparring at Blockhouse. And I would see Leota Machida after kind of paying attention to me and stuff. And then we saw him use that against Ryan Bader for the Ryan B Bader fight and get a flawless victory KO. We definitely have seen distracting hands done by Leota Machida. We have seen distracting hands done by Anderson Silva. Though he kind of mixes it between this and Filipino boxing, Wing Chun, uh, 52, Jailhouse Rock Baby. So um, we've also seen your Romero hypnotize. Hypnotize people and then knock them on their butt. So, uh, and that's mostly using the cross-arm defense uh, boxing or, or 52 skull and crossbones.
But just the hand movements distract people. But, th but that's not it. Defensively, I actually just took him down biomechanically with a shelf punch on his chin. It's too bad it was off camera. But I knew where his uh, structure was, his balance was, and I lifted my elbow joint to articulate the punch, and I took him down with a punch. I really took him down in live sparring, and we're banging pretty hard, as you see later on. I took him down with a punch. Anyway, you also want your hands close to your opponent, because when there's a huge disparity in wrestling ability, you're not going to be able to make that up with just a wrestling camp. Dustin already showed that he was willing to do something different, and I hope that he and his coaches will take a look at this. Uh, I'm an American top team guy nowadays in Atlanta and Gwinnett, so... Uh, who knows? I would love to go in and, and kind of explain this and, and help him out. So let's talk about a great wrestler like Khabib. Khabib really only has, according to UFC stats, 49% takedown uh, percentage. But, you know, he just chains them all together. So I don't think that's really telling the whole story, right? And Dustin has like 56% takedown defense. But, um, guys, I think most people think that Khabib will ragdoll. Dustin, without realizing how much punching power this guy has. It's like I forgot. I just we looked at his stats. And man, he's always been KOing and TKOing everybody. He's got rocks in his hands. Good guys. Um, so what I'm talking about is raising someone. Let's say if you think that he'd only be able to stop 20 to 25% of Khabib's takedowns. Right? Really low because Khabib is so great at chaining his wrestling together, staying tight, getting a tight waist, riding legs, cross wrists, etc. and so forth. If I can use this theory, this this distracting hands and hands first biomechanics takedown, adding to your takedown or fancy wrestling, if you will, if I could raise that to 40 or 50 percent for a guy like Dustin that has rocks in his hands, that may be all he needs. Because you get the guy tired defending the takedowns, it gives you the couple seconds to land a couple huge uppercuts, a couple huge punches on the jaw. And a guy like Dustin, that's really all he needs is more chances before time runs out. So, hands close to your opponent. The first rule of wrestling that everyone forgets, the first line of defense in wrestling is hands, then forearms, elbows, head, shoulders, hips. It's not hips first. It's not sprawl first. It's hands first. And so what you'll see me here in a bit is using hands to defend takedowns. Hands can be used to defend takedowns by lifting up the head, lifting up the chin very easily. They can be used by down blocking, shoving the guy's head into the ground, down blocking wrestling. Now, can you do that from a hard static wrestling muscular contracted uh, boxing stance? No. But if your hands are free floating out in space without muscular contraction, they can. And of course, you can parry down, parry up, they can spiral block out and land a counter hook. You can back step with a check hook. You can set up your liver kick like I faked there. You can set up your high kick. You can do all kinds of kick the inside of the calf, open up the base, go in on a punching blast. All kinds of great things. Oh, see that back pivot, that switch stance, that shift to the back pivot check hook right there and countered him with? Now, boxing coaches out there, this guy's no good. I'm not I'm not doing boxing. I'm beta testing distracting hands. <laughs> and it's still pretty good. You just don't think it looks the way you want it to look. People are so about form instead of function. Okay, speaking of the down blocks here, this is a uh, this is maybe six months ago. This guy's wrestled uh, like eight years before. This is an American top team in uh, the main one in Atlanta. And look at that down block. I'm doing cheese style instead of distracting hands. But I was able to down block him right into the ground because my hand was already there. It doesn't I don't have to uncontract and we send signals to go. They just go when you practice things like that. But I'm gonna like intercept his leg trip there, Kusunogaki. Instead of just worrying about my hips and sprawling, even in wrestling, the first line of defense is your hands. Hands, forearms, elbows, head, then your hips, right? Um, theoretically, and it is a bit theoretical, but I can work with my hands first. The first one's not that, but if he's coming in on me for a takedown, pull that defense. Use the overhook and stick your weight. Okay. People say that would never work. I worked against Roger Gracie and won. Anyone think I'm not? I'm McSweeney. 
biomechanics, shit things like that. People are going to say, well, this is these guys ain't pro fighters. No, they're not. But I'm showing you how you can twist the neck up, twist the head around, all different directions, wherever your hands happen to be. And that can help you with your takedown. Yes, I know these guys aren't great wrestlers. There's not the amount of pressure. I know wrestling. Okay. But where the eyes go, the head goes, the head goes, the body follows. And you make them intercept in the punches or hands first. While you're keeping your hips back to sprawl and kick and knee and do all the other fun stuff. Look, I know where he's shooting, right? My hips. So, distracting hands can be used for takedown defense. Well, thank you for running into my punch. Thank you for running into my punch. And now, I can twist your head. Your structure is broken. Let him run into the wall. Okay. Obviously, what I'm showing here, and in the next video, I show a little more from the distracting hands for MMA purposes, but I'm showing for, for street self defense combatives. Right. I know I'm coming. Let him run into the wall. The little uppercut of the body. Barely see it. If you know how to hit. Okay. <laughs> he ran into the wall. Remember, I'm not saying 100% takedown defense. If you get rocks in your hand, then I can raise it from 20, 25 to 40 to 50%. <laughs> and give you twice that. the amount of chances to knock the guy out. Stop a takedown simply with a punch slash cross base. Redirecting his neck, breaks his structure, spins him spirally. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Thank you. The CobbettSystem.com showing some more takedown defense, uh, breaking structure, using the hands as intercepting. I know where he's going, the center line, or my hips, my legs, or a body lock. I know where he's going. So if someone wants to try and take me down, I can always manipulate and work from there. Give him a little uppercut at the time. Breaking structure. Showing the head. Keeping the distance. <laughs> okay, if he wants to grab the head him, goes, the body <laughs> goes. Head tilt him backwards. End up in a grapple. That's okay. Stretch your arm out. He was very flexible. Most people I would not do that to their shoulder joints. Holding the head, neck fold basically there. Also get a slapping my slapping the back. No ref's gonna call it as a strike the first few times it's ever done. Besides. See, one hand was down. Ready to down block or cross face. Or reverse cross face with the punch. chin rip, rip or whatever <laughs> Turkey wing of death. so guys it gets your hands free floating which means fast hands they're closer to your opponent anyway to punch them in your face a guy like Dustin or me that really knows how to hit only needs a few inches anyway especially if the guy's trying to close distance to run into it you only need a few inches of extension you can parry the punches like a fencer parry and repost Look, whenever he decides to go, where's he going to go? I can push the chin up, I can push the head down, I can down block, I can cross face it, I can, you know, twist it spirally, wherever. While you're hitting, boom, I would have punched him three times there and then bam, there would have been a left kick. Just see from the moment, just imagine, I know this isn't a high level wrestler going against me. But I've been doing MMA longer than almost anyone on the planet. I've sparred top guys longer than almost anyone on the planet. More guys, probably six to seven, eight hundred top pro fighters that have fought in bigger organizations. On the street, 
tree. You shouldn't have attacked me. Oh, bad boy. Oh, bad boy. And I'm not even saying bad I can magically boy. defend 100% against oh, the very best wrestler in the world. But if I can increase the percentage quite substantially and give you a chance of knocking that person out or submitting them possibly with some kind of, you know, some kind of choke on the way in, that's what we're talking about. Oh, head twist. See, right in the interception there. You can do all this dirty stuff. That would technically be legal. Finally, Nagano did it to Stipe. Got off the cage. It wasn't just pressure. I was compressing the arteries there. Slapping there. That works against all kinds of holds, including plum clinches. Slap the ribs off their nerv nervous system, then manipulate the head. And then, guys, I hope you're getting the idea. The hands are floating. They're up and down. They're closer to the opponent. They're easier to land strikes. Easier to set up kicks to distract the vision, distract the brain, and pattern recognition that it doesn't recognize. And you see some more distracting hands here in Japan. This is just a, this just really light sparring the last of this footage. But do you see how you can hit from odd angles? Oh, something's always down to help frame a neck, frame a face away, cross face. There's always something in motion as opposed to punching hands up, both of them, and then someone gets underneath. Oh, it never worked. Go back and watch Lyoto Machida fights. Or a guy commentated Pancrase on UFC Fight Pass, T-800, and I got a knockout. I forget his name. His nickname T-800, I believe it was. Um, Yo Romero, Anderson Silva. <laughs> you think that you're totally open, and the boxers and the Muay Thai guys, oh, man, da, da, da. I've boxed for six years. Like, no, 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 dude, I've trained 33 years. I kind of know a little bit what I'm talking about. Okay? Yeah, I'm a little out there. IQ is graded about 153 by the government a few times in my life. So yeah, I'm a little eccentric. That's okay. I got haters. Whatever. They haven't had the cool life I have. Make stuff happen. And if you're up against a huge disparity of wrestling, you're not going to make it up in camp. You might increase your wrestling by 1%. I'm talking about doubling your takedown percentage would be my goal against a given opponent. I'm talking when there's a huge disparity. You know, in general, if I could raise it from 60 to 80 on a guy by doing this, especially when it's softball and orthodox, especially, seems to work extremely well in the open stance. So, guys, I'm Dan the Wolfman. I hope you have enjoyed it. Don't write it off. Dustin, look at it. Coaches, ATT, get a hold of me. All right. I'd be happy to, to come down and show it and help out however I can so let's uh, let's do something different let's change the game let's get in the matrix change the paradox think outside the box and make it happen hope you guys liked it please thumbs up please subscribe and I will catch you on the flip side cheers